Hello YouTube and welcome back and happy Thanksgiving. In today's Thanksgiving special, um, Charlie Brown can have one, I can too. All right, so in today's Thanksgiving special, we're gonna be talking about running a cylinder head right out of the box and why you can't. And I wanna say that you can't, but that's not true, you can. Does that make any sense? Uh, am I talking on both sides there? Um, if you buy a quality cylinder head, um, I love AFR, I love Brodex. You have some of these high-end indie uh, cylinder heads, you're paying a lot more for that head, but we'll even take a, a, um, a couple of springs off and we'll check the spring pressure, we'll check the guy, we'll check some stuff. Um, I'm learning in the higher-end cylinder heads, there's very little things we need to do. Uh, is just check, blow dry it, take a picture with it, and put it on. Um, but that's pretty rare. Um, this is a quality cylinder head. Um, this is American made. I'm not gonna tell you who makes the cylinder head because the point of this video isn't to rag on someone. That's not my intent at all. The uh, purpose of this, of this video, because I hear all the time, um, Danny, why do you gotta take this cylinder head and then you're gonna charge me for a competition valve job on a brand new cylinder head? And I let the work speak for itself. I can sit there and talk till I'm blue in the face and it doesn't matter, it doesn't make any sense. And I understand, this is my example. I'm gonna just be, this is Thanksgiving, y'all are enjoying Thanksgiving, the smell of turkey in the air. Um, here's the deal. I don't go next door to Sandra's Mexican, um, Mexican Cantina. Uh, um, this isn't an advertisement for them, but if you're in the neighborhood, Sandra's Mexican Cantina is right next door. Um, and their margaritas are awesome. And like Shop Mom says, their margaritas are out of this world. So, but I wouldn't go next door. And when I sit down, they say, would you like a lunch special? No, no, no. I don't want the enchilada lunch special. Um, I don't want that. But bring me some rice. Bring me some beans. Bring me two enchiladas. You know, by the time I get that $7.95 lunch special, I may be living in the, in the past. By the time I get that $9.95 lunch special, whatever the lunch special is, it may be $32. Because I ordered everything individually. I didn't want you to sprinkle cheese all over everything because I'm not a white cheese person. So I didn't want the lunch special. As opposed, I could have taken the cheese off, but, but I chose to not just bring me the rice because I don't want cheese to ever touch it. Just bring me the beans. Just bring me the two enchiladas. Maybe bring me one pepper. And I a la carte everything on my, like I have a $32 lunch special. Or I could have bought the lunch special and taken what I didn't want on it. Um, it made more cost effective w w way was to buy the lunch special and deal with that. Um, that was the most cost effective. The lunch special is right here. So here's what we have. We have the lunch special. Um, you couldn't have gotten this. Um, if I did this a la carte, if I went to this manufacturer and said, no, I just want your aluminum cylinder head. It can be even on the raw stage. And we do buy them in the raw stage. The guides will be in them and the seats will be in them, but the guides won't be sized and the seats won't be cut. Okay, so I now I have this head. Yes, it comes machined, the valve cover rail, it comes machined, all the pads come machined, all the bolt holes come machined, and it comes surface. Like I said, the seats and the guides are left raw so that we can do the machining ourselves. Now I'm gonna buy um, six intake valves. Now I'm gonna buy six exhaust valves. Now I'm gonna buy a set of springs. Now I'm gonna buy a set of comp retainers. Now I'm gonna buy a set of keepers. Well, golly, it was way more than buying this lunch special that had everything in it. But here's what ends up happening. I end up buying the lunch special and I end up throwing away the valve springs, retainers, and keepers because they're, I don't want to say China Pro, they're just not, uh, they're a production set. And I'm going to go ahead and replace them with a set of comps or a set of cranes or a set of iskies. Okay, so now I'm going to change the springs out and put a set of isky springs on it or comps. Um, and I'm going to put a set of comp retainers and a set of comp keepers. And then I'm going to buy a set of valves. I'm going to buy a set of stainless one-piece valves. So I buy all this American-made uh, um, quality stuff. And the cylinder head, which I could have bought for X amount, is actually way more. And yet I could have bought this lunch special and bolted it on the car. Because what does the box say? I'm not showing you the box of this cylinder head because I'm not specifically talking about the product i'm talking about the problems that uh, industry has and why it's such a, a 
I don't, it's hard to explain. That's why it's Thanksgiving, y'all have the smell of turkey in the air and you're more relaxed than I can relax myself and explain the, the dilemmas that we go through in the shop. Um, this is a living dilemma we go through every day in the shop. I send more cylinder heads back because they're not to my par. They're not standard, they're not to my standards. That being said, enough talking for a second. Now you know about the lunch special or buying everything individual. When I buy everything individually, I know what spring I have on here. I know what retainer I have on here. I know what keepers we have on here. We have broke a valve spring on the lunch special heads. A brand new set of lunch special heads um, in the cam break-in. Yep, 20 minute cam break-in, mild small block Chevy, set of lunch special heads on it, American made cylinder heads um, on it. And during a 20 minute cam break-in, no problems. Right after that, bring it down to idle. While we're now tuning, it wasn't five minutes later, we started getting a miss in the engine. Well, for the first thing I, you know, what's the deal? It must be the carburetor. Okay, it was, it was a carburetor provided, from, provided to us by the customer. So I start taking the, the carburetor apart, found a little dirty in it. We clean the carb, we do a kit, and the customer says, no problem. Put it back on again. It almost seems like it went away. Just a little bit of when we're about to, it comes back. Start getting a miss again. It would go away. It would come back. What the heck? The customer says, I am sorry for all these problems. Put a brand new carburetor on it. Bill me for it. No problem. All right. Buy a brand new carburetor. Put a brand new carburetor on it. And then it's doing pretty good for a little bit. And then here comes the miss again. The point being the problem we were having a broken valve spring. It didn't last or it didn't last the cam break in. Right after that, 20 minutes later, here we are. The spring broke and actually wound itself in a weird spot that it would still close the valve and it wouldn't miss. And then every once in a while it would unwind and start to miss a little bit. The missing would come and go. We spent two days on the, on the run stand chasing carburetors, chasing anything, pulling valve covers off, looking at everything. The more we scrutinized, except it's wrong. Golly, checking the valves again, checking the valves again. And finally it's like, would you believe that? Spring broke and just twisted right off the top, just twisted, still had tension, but it would miss. Weirdest thing in the world, uh, chasing my butt because of a broken spring. That's why I, I tell this story to customers because this is a possibility. It's only happened once. We've only happened once, but it was bad enough it was on a run stand. Can you imagine this was in the car? Um, and after that, I tell the story to tell the customer, we'll buy the complete built head. But understand, if something goes wrong, our warranty doesn't cover a broken valve spring. Our warranty covers our labor. Uh, um, it does not cover a broken valve spring. So, yes, the manufacturer can say, oh, pull that head off and bring it back. We'll give you another one. Who is paying for the labor? Our customer bought the heads from Summit. I'm not bragging on Summit. It wasn't Summit's fault. Summit says Summit had a great thing. Oh, whoa, whoa. we'll send you a, a, a return authorization. And, and we'll, we'll take care of you. They do have great, we'll take care of you. They don't pay labor. Who's paying labor? All right, so that being said, um, I'll go into showing you why um, this, um, I have issues with this head. I hope I'm not bumming out your, your Thanksgiving. Um, like I said, the smell of turkey in the air, how can it be bumming out your Thanksgiving? These are weird times. We're doing our Thanksgiving outdoors as we speak. It's actually Thanksgiving. So, uh, um, that being said, I thought this would be a perfect video because I get this question all, all the time, all the time, all the time. Why does your engine cost more than somebody else's engine? I won't bolt the head on out of the box. You know, I'll say if you want, if that's what you want, you can sign a little waiver. We'll bolt it on out of the box. Like I said, we've done it before, but I explain everything, explain what is, what, what's the possibilities, and then most of our customers, we're in a different realm. Most of our customers come here because they don't want cookie cutter. They've been everywhere else and they already have felt the pain of cookie cutter. They're here because of, of our reputation of how when our motor goes in, it's in, it's running, it's right, it's there for life. Um, that being said, that doesn't matter. I have a different clientele. I can understand my mother has a shop in San Antonio and it's a different clientele. Um, and um, could, could we convince one person 
to l let us do a vod job on a brand new head? It wasn't going to happen. Uh, here we do, you know, and this is what's going to happen to this head now is going to be torn apart and estimated how much money is it going to cost to fix this head. Um, he needs to add that to what he paid for the cylinder head. Um, makes no sense and it's kind of frustrating, but um, I always say if we can learn from, I don't want to say from somebody else's mistake, but if we can learn from, from an, an issue that's happened before, we may per, uh, save somebody in the future. And that's a plus. That's a plus. So a lot of people, that's why you watch YouTube is because you want to see something done beforehand and you want to try it yourself. I'm sure uh, this wouldn't be the first person that wants to put one of these bad dogs on their Jeep. Um, so what choices do you have? We won't go there. We won't go there. We won't go there. Okay. But I will go here. I am here. Happy Thanksgiving, by the way. All righty. So... What am I checking at here? I'm checking valve stems. Uh, I would encourage everybody, I need to do a video just on uh, um, a straight edge. I think this is, if you were gonna buy one piece of equipment uh, for your home shop, um, if you're a mechanic, you don't need to be a machinist to own one of these. Uh, a mechanic should have one of these. Everybody should have one of these. This right here, if you watch the video uh, with Phase Toyota, um, this is all right here that we needed to, it. this is what we need. And why? I'm doing the same thing we did to face Toyota. We're putting it across the top. And guess what? Now we can check, we can check the pads. And, and what are we seeing? What am I seeing? Perfect. Good. It's done on a mill and it's perfectly flat. Why is it important that the pads that the rockers bolt down, these are bolt down rockers, be perfectly flat? Well, if my pads are different heights, and I bolt my rockers down. This is called a non-adjustable valve train. It's just a bolt down valve train. In the industry, we call it a bolt down. What does that mean, a bolt down valve train? It means that we have bolts, rockers, we got a fulcrums inside and some bolts, and the mechanic, the guy who's putting this on, just bolts them down. There's no valve adjustment. The valve adjustment has been done in the machining of the head. And people go, oh, that's not adjustable. No, the, it's adjusted in the machine shop. That's why not having a good machine shop is giving a lot of people a lot of problems. It's because there is an adjustment. It's not in your control. The machine shop has to set the valve stems up at a certain valve stem because all that you do is bolt it down. So the preload on the lifter is done by the tips of the valves. There is an adjustment. It's just not in your hands. So we want to make sure that our pads are perfectly straight. And the first thing I'm checking is that all my valves are the exact same length. We want the valves all the same length. We want the pads all the same length. If they did their homework and they're at the right specs, you just bolt it down. You're good to go. Done. There is a valve adjustment. It's in the heights that the valves were set at. You bolt them down. I can go into the whole... Um, I'm already in my mind, I'm already thinking, you know, you know me, and it's this Thanksgiving, so this could be as long as I want to make it. I don't know if y'all have the time to sit here and enjoy Thanksgiving with me, but there's so many things, and you know now when I start discussing something, I go on and on because everything touches something else. Now I'm going on lifter preload, and I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, I haven't even talked lifter preload yet, and you may not understand what I'm talking about unless we start talking about lifter preload. Lifter preload could be another eight part series like my ring video. Um, you can't talk about lifter preload in 30 seconds, but I got 30 seconds right now. Let me talk about lifter preload. Lifter preload, see how I am? It is Thanksgiving and it is a festive weekend. So this is a sheet of paper and this is a pen. Um, we have, if you can see this or not, that's a lifter. Not bad for drawing it upside down. And here's the push rod. Here's the camshaft. The cam has a lobe on it. It turns, the lifter goes up and down, moves the push rod, moves the rocker, the rocker comes across. There's a rocker arm ratio that we times times the lift. You see how I can't just, just go there? And that pushes the valve down. It's real simple. Uh, um, we have um, a rocker and a push rod. If I push if I'm pivoting here, I push this up, look what happens. Yeah, look at that. All right, so a Johnson lifter. 
Don't need to stop right now and go uh, Google Johnson Lifter. Johnson Lifter is a hydraulic lifter, one of the best in the industry. Now is Johnson High Lift, but um, everybody uses the Johnson Lifter style. So is it a Johnson Lifter style? Um, so a Johnson Lifter has inside of here, inside of here, it's a bore, a spring, a check valve, and a piston and a c-clip on the top that piston there what is preload preload is the point that the push rod touches the piston just touches the piston and the lifter so i spin my push rod with my hand i got my rockers loose i start tightening the bolt down until the push rod just has a little bit of a drag in it at that point that's zero lash zero lash it means there is no lash. There's a lack of lash. Um, you're probably going, golly, but um, what's lash? See, everything starts to touch something else. Lash is clearance. I think, let's use clearance. Um, let's not use the technical term of lash. Let's use clearance. Zero clearance. Okay, so we've tightened the nut down until, now the cam must also be on the base circle. Once again, Danny. Here we go. The base circle, what does that mean? Really quickly, it means that the lobe is aiming down. See my little drawing? The lobe? That's what's going to give me my lift. The base circle, it's this circle, imaginary circle right here. That's the base. The base. Once the cam starts turning, the lobe will lift the valve. When the lobe is all the way down, that's what we consider the base circle. So right there, when somebody says the base circle, that's what they mean. They mean the lowest spot on the cam lobe. So the easiest way is to move the cam lobe down and you're at the base circle. The lifter's there, the push rod's there. You're spinning it with your hand and you're tightening the nut until it just touches. Zero lash or no clearance, okay? If this was a solid, we would have lash and clearance. We would have a feeder gauge there and we would have a gap. No gap, remember Smokey, no gap. Okay, so, whew, where are we at? Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. All right, so we're now at the base circle. We're now have tightened our nut down or the bolt to zero lash. Now, what do we need in a Johnson lifter? I need a pin that can write upside down. And I'll put in some little windows and bubbles. I'm getting pretty good at that so that you don't need to, if you can't see this, then I'll put a big old bubble right in front of my face and I'll point at it. How's that? Um, I'll put a picture of a turkey and it'll be a, this writing. We won't go there. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Alrighty then. So what do we got there? 20 thousands, 60 thousands. What does that mean? We need no less than 20 thousands preload no more than 60 thousandths preload that's a johnson style lifter this formula will get 90 percent of every engine ever built in america or in the world right we start getting these new modern engines uh race motors with a comp uh or iski lifter that's a, a zero lash lifter even on a hydraulic those are some new technologies let's not go there right now if you remember this right here you can go out and any hydraulic cam you can figure this this out any engine any engine you got problems with it Go to this formula. Always remember that. I've known this since I was a kid. 20 to 60. 20 to 60. Um, no less than 20. No more than 60. Okay. Why, you ask? Why? Why, Danny? Why? If my preload is less than 20 thousandths, the piston is only coming down off that C-clip. A lot of times it's a little bitty metal clip on a nice comp uh, uh, lifter. Iski uh, will have a C-clip. Needs a pair of C-clip pliers. Heavy duty. It's a race lifter. On a stock lifter, it'll be a piece of wire. Um, to be honest, you don't need a C-clip at all. The C-clip is just there so when the lifter is sitting on a table, it doesn't spring out on the floor. When the assembly line is going down and the engine is being assembled, those C-clips keep the lifters together. Once you put them in a motor and you put the preload in, the piston comes down, the C-clip doesn't do nothing. You could take all the C-clips off doesn't need them the c-clip is just there to keep it the lifter assembled while you assemble the engine okay so 
We don't need to start getting with heavier duty C-clips made out of titanium or Brazilium or some exotic name that I can't mention. Um, if you set your lifter preload right, the piston doesn't even touch the clip. How many of y'all have pulled an intake manifold off, not yours, but a buddy of yours calls you over to the house because he's got problems, and when you start turning the engine down, there's C-clips all in the valley of the motor. A couple of y'all, you can see all through this, uh, right, right through there. That's because they didn't have enough preload. The lifters got so loose that the piston beat the clips all out, and you got clips all in your valley. Don't get me going there. It's a pet peeve of mine, not, not the correct preload. All our engines have the correct preload, and they're not um, by luck. There's not a big window there, is there? No less than 20, or the C clips will, will, will come out. No more than 60. Why do we, we don't want to push that piston down further than 60 thousandths in the hole? Why? Because everything is another explanation. There's a hole in the lifter where oil goes in. If the plunger, it's not in its window and the plunger goes too far down, that's when you have what's called a collapsed lifter. The plunger so far down, it actually passed the hole, it blocked the oil hole off, it didn't get an oil in it, and the lifter collapsed. Because you cannot compress the liquid, people. You can compress air, you can compress your buddies, your friends, but a liquid cannot be compressed. That's why there's oil in a lifter. You try to compress the lifter, it's hydraulic, you cannot compress a liquid. So what does it do? It compresses the spring, okay? The reason it's self-adjusting is because when there's no oil pressure, now that little piston has a little spring underneath and a check valve. The little spring pushes the piston up against the push rod, gets zero lash. As soon as it starts up and gets oil pressure, oil pressure goes underneath the piston and tightens everything up. Self-adjusting. As long as you keep that piston in its window. If you put it in the middle there, as the motor heats up and everything expands, it can actually adjust itself. As the motor gets cold and everything contracts, it can adjust itself. As the motor gets 100,000 miles on it, it can self-adjust. Um, I'm going to just take a moment and check to make sure that I'm still even recording. Okay. All right, all right. All right, all right, all right. So what do we do? We're talking about lifter preload. Even though we're not getting lifter preload, we're going into the why we don't run a, uh, a cylinder head out of a box. Um, but I can't explain what the problem is with the cylinder head without going by how critical everything is on a cylinder head. You think that manufacturers would know this? Um, what do I know? Why is it important that the lifter preload have at least 20? We talked about that. Y'all can probably answer me now. Um, and no more than 60. Why? This is a good general rule of thumb that will never bite you in the ass on 99% of every engine ever made in the world, as long as it's hydraulic. The newer stuff now, we're doing a zero lash hydraulic racing lifter. Uh, we're doing some lifters, even like a Rhodes, that, that like to push the plunger all the way down to the bottom, smash it to the bottom, not smash it, and then come off the bottom and, and check and to set your, your lifter preload. Those are all different examples that is not the common. So this is a good reference that will never bite you in the ass um, unless you're working on a roads lifter or a race lifter. And if that's the case, be using the, the instructions that come with the lifter. Don't be using this instruction. Alrighty. So we know why the lifter preload and we know why it's so important. Um, and we know now why the valve tips need to be all the same height. And we know why the pads need to be all the same height. If we have all the pads at the same height, and all the valve tips at the same height, we can now play with our lifter preload if we want to blueprint something um, by lift by push rod length. So we can change the push rod length and uh, we could adjust our lifter preload. So we could take the stock push rods, put them on here, put the rockers on, um, start tightening up uh, the bolt, checking the lifter preload. I like to put a dial indicator. There's plenty of math out there um, on, on Google on thread pitch and how much one turns. Uh, 3 8 by 16 by 20, one turn, 50 thousands. Um, don't get me going on math. And um, there's plenty of, of that. If you need a video on thread pitch and how much... Uh, how much lifter preload per every one turn? I'll do a video on quarter inch, five sixteenths, three eighths, and seven sixteenths. Dang it. 
Um, just let me know if you want to see that. If not, we won't go there. So, once we're going down, this is a coarse thread. This isn't 3 eighths, this is 5 sixteenths. Once we're down to zero lash, we discussed zero lash already. We're gonna go about a half to three quarters of a turn preload. Um, I put a down indicator and I'll see how much that makes a difference and I'll reference that um, generally on a 3 eighths, 16, um, we want a half to th three quarters preload. You can do a full turn preload anywhere in the half. Anything less than half, I know it's less than 20. Anything more than a full turn, I know it's more than 60. Um, so there, that being said, th three quarters of a turn get you where you want to be. All right, so once I'm checking my lifter preload and I'm liking it, go ahead and tighten them all down. You have no adjustment. They're just bolt downs. All you do is torque the bolt down. This is a 5 16 bolt. It's going to be um, 8 to 10 pounds of torque. Um, I tell everybody, you're going to have more problems with the torque wrench. Throw the torque wrench away. Snug the bolts down. It's 8 to 10 pounds. You're good to go. You heard it here first. Me telling you to throw a torque wrench away. Um, I see more, more problems with people that go out to Harbor Freight, buy a torque wrench, turn on the YouTube, and, and are really, really, really trying to do it right. And then they'll go read on there and then snap a bolt. What happened? Oh, it told me inch pounds. It didn't tell me foot pounds. Oh, I didn't turn my dial right. You don't have the feel. What have I been saying? You need to know how it feels in your hand. And it's really, really true. You need to know how everything feels in your hand. Walk around. It's Thanksgiving. Close your eyes, walk around, start touching everything. Um, you need to know how everything feels in your hands. It just it's just true. I don't know how to I'm not making this up. This isn't just it is a fun day, Thanksgiving. Can you smell that turkey yet? Um, but you need to know how it feels because if you don't know how it feels, turning a torque wrench and waiting for a click, that bolt could be screaming at you, stop! And you don't know because you're listening for a click and nothing more. That's so bad. I tell people, go to a junkyard, go to a scrapyard, not a, not a salvage yard that you care about the person, a scrapyard, take you a ratchet. That's the first thing. If you were like a kid, what do I do? Take you a rat, a two toolbox, go to a scrapyard and start breaking bolts. Start on the old pan bolts. Start turning them, turn them till they break. Do a couple, do a couple. Before long you go, oh, I know how much is tightening and how much is breaking, right? Go break bolts. That is really the best way to know how does it feels in your hand when a bolt's about to go. That makes sense? Um, you need to know just when it's about to let go. Um, because that's when you know, oh, stop. It's telling you, it's screaming at you. The bolt gets spongy. Um, it starts giving it up. Um, once you get to the point, it becomes like a sponge. You've, ex you've stretched that bolt beyond. Um, a lot of times you can know when, you, when you're getting there. Um, you know the feel of it. I can't, over this video, I can't describe the, the way it feels like in your hand. Could you describe to me the way it feels like in your hand? Uh, what are we talking about? All right, so let's get to it. Like I said, I thought I'd use the Thanksgiving because I can take my time. Um, I hope y'all gonna hang in there and watch this long. I could be wrong and y'all are checking out. You may have checked out a long time ago. Alrighty then. Straight edge. Hey, I'll put a link in the bottom. Well, get your straight edge today, you know? Go buy your straight edge. It's gonna be a Black Friday gift. Um, ask a lot of your, your friends, your neighbors, your friends, everybody. How many people have one of these? Everybody needs one of these. Um, I don't want to tell me I, I use a straight edge at home to get my studs and but uh, yes I did I'll do a video I'm doing a remodeling in my house and um, I'm getting all a little sidetracked but it's Thanksgiving we're slowing down and enjoying today um, here's a good example how you can enjoy today this customer waited I don't know how long for this head months it just came in he drove straight here as happy as could be to unbox it you're getting the benefit of not having to have bought this high dollar head to find this wrong with it. Doesn't that just cheer you up a little bit? Not, we shouldn't take pride or joy in somebody else's mishaps and we're not, but we're learning from this. So that being said, cheer up people. All right. Can you see that? This is actually even the worst one. There's my straight edge from one tip of the valve to the next tip of the valve. Can you see that? Can you see that? Fortunately, because I like to over 
talk and explain everything, my customer was like, you warned me. I told you, look, why would I go buy a Mexican plate? Man, you know, I mean, well, why would I go buy everything individually? Buy that, but understand, I've never been able to bolt one of these right out of the box uh, um, and bolt it on a, I, I can't put it on a, on a I, would, I can't do nothing with this besides take it apart and machine it. And it's brand new. Why are we doing this to a brand new head? But since I take the time to explain what has happened in the past, like we've broken a valve spring before. It only happened once, but if you don't explain to the customer, that way if it happens, it's not like, you know, you did something wrong because it broke a spring and that manufacturer says they've never broken a spring. That manufacturer might not be telling you the truth. You know me, I'll always tell you the truth. So, 31 thousandths. 31 thousandths, that valve is lower than the valve next to it. Hmm. These are bolt downs. There's no adjustment. If I didn't have enough preload, I could put a longer push rod. If I had too much preload, I could put a shorter push rod. Do I want to buy 12 push rods? All different lengths? No, it makes no sense, but I could buy different link push rods. I could have custom push rods made and I could set my lifter preload perfect. Here's another thing that I say. The valves. We got 30 thousandths lower valve. The comp, when they ground that cam, did they go, hey, let's hit that within 30 thousandths, the base circle. Yeah, within 30 is okay. No. If you have um, a dyno or a dyno program, um, turn on that dyno program and put a cam spec in there and change the cam spec by 10 thousandths. You have a different characteristics of an engine. Change the duration a little bit. Change the timing a little bit. Uh, change anything in the cam. I'm talking about a very slight change. And you'll see, you'll change the characteristics of a cam. Go open up the comp book. I can open a comp book right now and you'll see, man, all those are about 480 lift. But wow, this one RPM is different. This one is different. This one is different. Why? Because the cam grinder, I didn't go to college to learn how to grind cams and I'm not, I don't play a cam grinder on TV. Um, this is YouTube and it's almost like TV, but I don't play a cam grinder. All I know is the cam grinder didn't sit there and generally threw numbers on the computer. He played with those numbers to change the characteristics of the cam and when he was happy with it, boom, they grind that cam to that spec. If I have valves that are different heights, think about it, I got two valves, the lobe is coming around, this valve is 30 thousandths lower, it's coming around. Um, yes, the lifter preload can take away that lash and we can now essentially, it's still opening the valve at the same time. Um, your valve geometry is a, go right to today's Thanksgiving. Um, you're gonna have plenty of time. You might not have plenty of time. Maybe you're doing the cooking. Um, I would encourage you to type in Ralph Johnson. Um, uh, uh, you work for Smokey Unic, you work for Crane Cams. There's a video, I think it's the only one that I've ever found of Ralph Johnson. Um, I believe uh, Hot Rod Magazine, someone interviewed him and he's talking about uh, valve geometry and he's talking about um, how changing the angle of attack changes the valve lift. It's unbelievable. Until you put a dial indicator and you check it yourself, and all he does is change the length of a push rod. The length of it. Just like we're messing with the lengths of, of, the, uh, of the valves. So he decides to change a lifter push rod length, and then he does a valve adjustment. The same thing that a, that a hydraulic lifter is gonna do. It's gonna self adjust. All right, by changing the push rod length, um, he was able to change the valve lift quite a bit. It's a great video, go watch. Pause this video, go watch Ralph Johnson's video, and then come back and go, damn. Because you, the more you learn, the more that you go, damn. We didn't know it was so, it was so complicated. Um, and that being said, why would any manufacturer leave a valves like this? It makes no sense. If I were to try to manufacture a product and put it out, out to sell to the public, I would be embarrassed. I would just, I, I mean, I don't even know how to describe it, but um, I've seen it enough and I describe it enough, often enough that at the point that um, people 
go and check whether things I'm saying to check, then they come back and go, you were right. That's why it cost $2,000 for a head that I could have bought for $1,000. Well, yeah, because I'm going to buy the bare head and then I'm going to buy all the parts individual and then I'm going to do all of my machine work and we're going to have a cylinder head ready for NASA for your regular car. Eh, that being said. All right. So what do we have? We have 30,000 here. We got more than 30. They're all over the place. They're all over the place. Um, I may put the camera in real close um, so that you can see the, 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 the tip, but this shows it right here. I mean, I don't need to do that. It's Thanksgiving. Y'all trust me. I hope y'all, uh, um, trust and believe me. There we go. Um, that's that one right there. Um, we have three valves that seem to be on the same plane. So, um, this one, this one at the end, and there is one that's close this one right here um and i believe i checked it it's within five thousandths um of these so we got this one this one and this one um this one's uh way over 35 low 30 i got a bunch of 20s and 30s low um the worst one is like 35 or 37 right here so what happened what happened um and how will we fix this how will we fix this Do I want to take this brand new cylinder head, pull it apart, and sink the valves, do the old Titanic on it, and um, sink all the valves, so cut all the seats, or cut the valves, cut, cut, and just sink them um, right off the bat so that I can get my heights back up to where they should be? And not really, you buy a brand new head to go butcher and sink all the damn valves. Um, or did they just leave these too high? Um, do I have to change all the valves? Did, did, maybe they already cut the stems. Maybe they didn't address the stems at all. Maybe that's why we had this problem. Um, is it that the seats are all like this? Is it the valves that are all like that? That's what it is. So now we're gonna have an hour. Um, we charge $95 an hour. We got $100 that the customer is now gonna uh, be in. He's gonna be 100 over now before he decides to send us back to Summit or not. Uh, that's the quick answer. Summit, send it right back, I'll give you money back. These heads are hard to come by. There isn't, he waited months to get this head. So he doesn't want to wait. He wanted to put it on Thanksgiving. Um, today's Wednesday. Tomorrow he wanted to put this head on um, during the Thanksgiving holiday. It ain't happening. He can, he can put it on, but I think it'll run better with the stock head and head on it. Um, so what we need to do is we're going to uh, spend an hour and we're going to take it apart. We're going to check the seats, the valves, check the stem height to find out what went wrong. Uh, hopefully um, the valves are just too tall and we can cut this, the, the stems and get them back straight again. If it's within spec on the valve height, um, that'd be awesome. That could be done in possibly another half hour after the hour, an hour and a half he's into it and we got to set back right again. Um, if not, and we're going to have to either change valves or seats, I don't know really what he's going to do. Um, and I've already um, spent a little time when we unboxed it. Um, they use a CNC program to come around here. And it's such a new head that no one has taken the time to go, oh, we need to move the CNC program over slightly. So when it came in there and it cut the valve, va the valve cover pad, they actually left a wall of aluminum so it had a casting and they cut the, the valve cover pad and they left this aluminum wall there. Looking at the boat hole, it looks to me like the valve cover gasket and the valve cover are gonna hit that lip. Um, uh, someone needed to, hey, yeah, you know what? Um, let's move the, the program over about 10 thousandths. Um, hey, the guy that took a die grinder and deburred all this edge, could have done it. Maybe they didn't allow him because um, I already did it. I took a die grinder and I die ground those little edges off that they left on because I thought that's the only problem that I could see until we saw the stem heights. Um, so I just lightly uh, deburred it. You could tell he wanted to. He touched a couple of spots and he, it looks like he touched and he touched the head and he's like, I better just stop um, because I can see where he touched the head. 
Uh, he touched the head casting more than he touched the machine part. Um, that's not a big deal. Um, but so um, an example is, can you see this here? I'll zoom in in a little bit. You see the valve cover bolt hole and you see the casting around it? Um, okay, so if you see the valve cover bolt and you see the casting around it, what you see is if I were to draw a circle, that's a perfect circle around the bolt hole. Well, what do you see here? The distance from there to there. Woo, big, real small. So, it's a casting. That's just what happens. Um, when the head gets casted, the casting could shift. Um, so, when the casting shifts, let me put it back where you can see me. All castings are going to have shift. Um, um, when they put it in a mold, they're going to have casting shift one way or another. This head is actually what I love about this brand and this manufacturer. It is aluminum. Uh, it is a, a American made. It's American aluminum. It's an American foundry. It's an American company. And the aluminum is excellent. It's not China. It's not a Chinese aluminum head. Um, if you look at the padding around the uh, rocker studs, real, real centered, really nice. Um, this company always casts everything real thick. So I'm not concerned that it's off a little bit. Um, I think either the valve cover placement either was moved slightly or just the casting shifted. Um, and when that casting shifted and they came in and machined it, it left a big lip on it. So they need to get their casting shift and machining program tweaked a little bit. Um, after you run a couple of these heads, put them on a the table and open your eyes and see what's going on. Don't just say, hey, awesome, I'm signing off on it and we're done, because this is what happens. Um, I think I've talked enough about this. I don't want to ruin everybody's Thanksgiving. I hope that uh, this explains why we don't want to run anything out of a box. Um, I'm not the only one. Uh, there's plenty a lot there. Um, it's d difficult to run stuff out of the box. It just really is. You're, you're, it's a gamble. It's a gamble. If you're willing to gamble and uh, take a chance, I don't know how this would even work. Um, 20 to 60, that leaves me 40 thousandths. Um, we're 30, what do we have, 32, 35 or something? Theoretically, these valves being like this are fitting in the in the window no matter which way i hold it it doesn't look any better does it uh theoretically because there's forty thousands of 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 uh place you could be there no less than 20 no more than 60 there's forty thousand that if you're anywhere in that forty thousands range it's going to work that's that's the spec that's the production spec um that's why they have a big wind that's why they use a hydraulic lifter with a big window like that because if you're pretty close, you can take a cylinder head off, you can do a valve job, put it back on, and it'll self-adjust because it's in that window. So theoretically, um, there is a slight chance that this customer could bolt this on and it might be in that window of running. It wouldn't be in the window of precision at all. It wouldn't be in the window of anything in my world of... of Everybody always wonders why our engines sound different than somebody else's engine. I can build the exact same motor that somebody else builds and not necessarily use any different parts. And everybody always goes, why do your engines just sound different? Um, why do they crack the throttle and rev just pop? They just hit so hard. Um, they're smooth. If you watch any of my videos on, on the run stand, on, on, on engines that we've broken and run, um, any of mine that are on the dyno, we took them to, we put them on, on, on the chassis dyno, we put them on the dyno. They sound different. The engines just sound different. It isn't by luck. Luck had nothing to do with the way it sounded. Luck had nothing to do with the way it was built. Yeah, it probably, mine has cost three times as much as everybody else's. I, I apologize for that, but there's nothing to apologize for. Um, like I said, we have a waiting list for two years for an engine build. Um, there's a reason for that. There's a reason for that, reason for that, reason for that. Nothing is chance. Nothing is production. Nothing. Everything is set to what clearance we want, what lifter preload we want. And guess what? Every valve has the same lifter preload. Every valve has the heights. 
And I say within one thousandths, and I freak out if it's not less than that. Um, it's not by luck uh, that our engines sound that way. It, it's nothing by luck. Uh, a lot of times I check stuff and it's okay, that's fine. But it never goes bolted on without being checked. So, I've said enough. I hope you all have had a great Thanksgiving. I hope that now um, you can, and I don't want to say you can call your wife and go, look, babe, this is why I'm buying the more expensive aluminum sonar heads. Because it may be you calling your husband, look, babe, this is why I'm buying the more expensive aluminum heads. Um, whoever you are, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're enjoying this. I don't know, maybe I'm presumptuous and you're not enjoying this. Maybe you checked that a long time ago and I only got two people watching. That's okay. I'll talk to just two people. Um, that all being said, have a great Thanksgiving. Leave me a comment. If you want to see more lifter preload, lifter preload could go on and 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 on. Um, um, hit the like and subscribe button. I know that y'all already have. If you're new to this channel, if it's Thanksgiving is the first time you've come to the channel and you go, who is this guy? And he just goes on and on and on. That's who this guy is. The guy that goes on and on and on. Um, but leave me a comment and ask, why do I go on and on? I don't know. Um, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Uh, enjoy your family. Enjoy your friends. Stay safe out there. We're doing our Thanksgiving outside. Um, it can be done. Um, it's a different uh, era that we're in that doesn't mean that you can't still have quality time with your family we're going to be zooming on the the computer and we're going to be uh, deep frying a turkey outside maybe thanksgiving i'll do a live stream frying a turkey i don't know uh, leave me a comment you want to see me fried turkey for thanksgiving thank you all um i don't know what else to say i think you're done shot mom tell your friends tell your neighbors tell your buds tell your chickens cats and the dogs through zoom Let's be safe, people. COVID. Oh out. yes, right. Be you uh, use Zoom this weekend. Um, anyway, stay safe out there. Um, it's a different world out there, but just stay safe. We're all going to get through this. And as for me, I'm going to get back to work. We're done. All righty then. We'll see you on the next one. All right, left that way, came in that way, came in that way, and left this way. We don't know where I'm coming or where I'm going. Stop and I'll redo it, okay? Take 69, because we know how much we like that. All right, I hope this video has been informative, um, educational, if nothing else, entertaining. I get asked all the time about a cylinder head. Can you run them right out of the box? Now you know the answer, and now you can help spread the word about why you don't want to run a cylinder head right out of the box. Um, as for that, I hope you all have a good Thanksgiving. Spend it with your family. Stay safe out there. Um, I'm thankful for having y'all. Um, th this year, I'm thankful for having y'all, um, I'm going to say in my life, but at least in my videos. Um, so thank y'all for that. Um, hug somebody out there for me. Tell them I told you. Just find a stranger. Hug them and say, Danny told me to. Nope, I'll take the blame on that one. Alrighty then. Um, as for me, I'm getting back to work. We'll see you on the next one. But make it a COVID safe hug. Oh, make it a COVID safe hug. P.S. Make it a COVID hug from behind. <laughs> That's not a COVID Don't, safe no, hug. Not a COVID safe. <laughs> All right, no hugging. Uh, sorry about that. Um, we'll leave that for the end video outtakes. Sorry. Alrighty. And the 69 mentioned? Nope, I did. Okay.